Hey, it's Ryan with Parts Doctor, and today we're showing you how to disassemble some of the key components on the Samsung refrigerator. Listed in the description below are timestamps to the components that we'll be covering. Let's get started. First, we're going to cover how to remove the ice maker. First thing that we'll need to do is put the refrigerator into a forced defrost mode. This will let us defrost the ice maker compartment. Depending on your model refrigerator, there's a couple different button sequences to do this. To enter into the force defrost mode on this model refrigerator, we'll hold down the energy saver and fridge buttons for approximately 8 seconds. Then press the fridge button until the display says FD for force defrost. You want to leave the refrigerator in the force defrost mode for approximately 5 to 10 minutes to let the ice maker and the ice maker compartment thaw out. To exit out of the force defrost mode, you'll press the same two buttons that you use to enter into the force defrost mode, and then press the button until the display goes blank and it stops beeping. At this time, you'll need to unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. Now we'll need to remove the ice bucket assembly. To remove the ice bucket, you'll grab the bottom, lift up, and pull out. Some older models may have a button up here to depress. If your ice maker compartment has excess ice and frost built up inside, you'll want to make sure that you thaw that out, but not by using any additional heat sources like a blow dryer or heat gun. That can warp the inside plastic and ruin the refrigerator, which is not repairable. The best way to thaw up the ice maker compartment is to just leave the doors open and let it thaw out on its own. Next, we'll remove the wire housing cover by removing the Phillips screw. With the Phillips screw removed, pull the cover towards you and out to remove it. Next, pull the wiring out of the side of the ice maker compartment and then depress the locking clip to remove the ice maker wiring plug. Next, you'll remove the Phillips screw on the ice duct tray. Next, using a flat blade screwdriver, we'll pry the ice duct tray over to the right and pull it down. The ice maker in this refrigerator is unique in that it has a built-in cooling coil on the bottom side of the ice maker. You'll need to make sure that this is fully thawed out, that there's no ice or frost on the coil before removing it. You want to make sure that you're very careful and you do not damage or puncture the coil on the bottom of the ice maker. If it's damaged, the whole refrigerator is ruined and cannot be repaired. To release the coil from the ice maker, you'll use a flat blade screwdriver and you'll pry down on the top of the coil. You'll want the coil pried down just enough so that the ice maker can slide out but the coil will stay in place. To remove the ice maker, depress the top locking clip, pull the ice maker forward, and then down to remove it. Next, we'll show you how to remove the evaporator cover in the refrigerator compartment. For this repair, we'll need to unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. The first thing that we're going to need to do is remove the four door bins on the lower part of the left door and the lower part of the right door. Next, we'll need to remove the two vegetable drawers. To remove the vegetable drawer cover, you'll need to simultaneously press the two clips on the left and right sides. This will release it from the filter case assembly, which will allow you to lift it out and remove it. Next, we'll need to remove the shelves inside the refrigerator. The quick space shelf on the side of the ice maker can stay in place. To remove the shelves, you'll need to grab the front of the shelf and lift up. With your other hand, you'll need to grab the rear of the shelf and lift it up and forward towards you to remove it. Next, we'll remove the screw cover and then we'll remove the four Phillips screws. To remove the screw cover, we'll use a small flathead screwdriver and then you can pry out the plastic cover to remove it. First, we'll need to remove the two Phillips screws that hold the center shelf support. Next, remove the two bottom Phillips screws. Now we can remove the evaporator cover by pulling on the bottom and then along the edges to remove the locking clips. With the evaporator cover released, it is still connected in the upper left hand corner of the fridge. You want to pivot it by pulling out on the right edge of the evaporator cover and leaving the left side in place. Once you gain access to the wire plugs, you can remove them by depressing the locking tabs. Next, we'll show you how to remove the filter case assembly. For this repair, we'll need to unplug or disconnect power and turn off the water supply to the refrigerator. To start off, we're going to need to remove the door bins from the refrigerator. With the door bins removed, we'll next need to remove the two vegetable drawers. Next, we'll need to remove the vegetable cover assembly. To remove the vegetable drawer cover, we'll simultaneously depress the two locking clips and lift up to remove. Next, we'll remove this top hinge cover assembly to disconnect the water line. 
that goes from the door down to the filter case assembly. Next we'll need to remove these three Phillips screws. To remove the top cover, there's two clips per side. There's arrows indicating each clip. You'll need to pry on those areas to lift the cover up. Now we'll flip up the top cover and you'll want to be careful because there's a wire connecting it. Next we'll remove the cover on the water connector using a screwdriver. You'll pry off the cover and slide it down. Next we'll press the red collar inward with the screwdriver while pulling the water line outward to remove it. Now you can slide the blue cover off the water line. Now on the back side of the refrigerator we'll use a Phillips screwdriver to remove this cover and these two hose retaining clips. Next we'll remove the cover by pulling out on the bottom of it and then pulling down to remove it. After removing the screws from the two clips, you can simply pull them off to remove them. Next, peel back the tape that's securing the hoses in place. Next, we'll need to remove the blue and gray hoses from the top corner of the fridge. You'll want to make a note of these two black lines on the hoses or take a picture of them. So that way when you reinstall the hoses, you know how far they go into the fridge. To remove the gray line, use a flat blade screwdriver to depress the slocking collar and pull the hose out to remove it. To remove the blue line, simply grab the hose and pull on it to remove it. Next, we'll remove the water supply line to the refrigerator. Next, using a flathead screwdriver, we'll depress the locking clip under the filter case assembly. That'll allow you to slide it forward. With the filter case unlocked, we'll now turn it, and that'll give us access to the wires on the back wall on the left-hand side. Once you gain access to the wire plugs, you can remove them by depressing the locking tabs. Now everything should be disconnected from the filter case assembly, so you should be able to remove it by pulling the water lines out of the back of the refrigerator. Next, we'll try to remove the left door. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power and turn off the water supply to the refrigerator. The first thing that we'll need to do is remove the tabletop cover, which is located here. To remove the tabletop cover, start by removing these three Phillips screws. Now, locate the four locking tabs indicated by the arrows, pry on them, then flip up the cover. Be careful, as it's still connected by wires. Next, disconnect the electrical plug by depressing the locking tab. Now remove the water line from the coupler by pushing the collar in and pulling the water line out. Next, use a piece of tape to secure the door in place. Next, remove the hinge fixer by rotating it up and sliding it out. Now remove the coupler from the door hinge by carefully prying it out of the bracket. Next remove the door hinge by lifting up on the front, carefully removing the wires and water line, and lifting out to remove. Now grab the handle, then peel the tape back and support the other side of the door. Next open the door up about halfway and lift up to remove it from the hinge. Next we'll show you to remove the freezer evaporator cover. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. The first thing that you'll need to do is open up the freezer drawer. Next, remove the upper freezer tray assembly by pushing it to the rear, lifting the wheels out of the slots, and then lifting up on the front to remove it. Next, remove the freezer box tray by tilting the rear and pushing back to remove it from the front slot, then tilt forward and lift up to remove. Next, remove the four 10 millimeter bolts. There are two on each side. Next, we can remove the freezer door by grabbing both sides, lifting up to remove the door brackets from the slide rails, and lifting out to remove. Next, remove the retaining pin from the gear shaft by simply pulling it out. Next, remove the gear shaft by sliding it to the right, then lifting up on the left side and sliding it out to remove it. Next, remove these two Phillips screws. Before removing the panel, it's a good idea to let it thaw out in case the panel's frozen in place. You do not want to use any additional heat sources as it can warp the inside of the freezer. Grab the bottom of the panel, pull towards you, then pull down. Be careful as the top is still connected by wires. Now disconnect the electrical plug by depressing the locking clip and pulling out. Now rotate the top of the panel downward to remove it from the freezer. Next we'll show you to remove the condenser fan motor. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. The condenser fan motor is located behind this panel. First, remove these five Phillips screws. Then, 
Then, tilt the cover back and lift off to remove. Before removing the fan motor, you'll want to be careful to not damage any of the refrigerant lines, especially the one that runs in front of the fan motor housing. Next, disconnect the electrical plug by depressing the locking clip. Now remove the two Phillips screws. For the screw on the right, you may need to gently push the coil back while you remove the screw. Next, remove the fan motor by pulling it towards you to release it from the locking tabs. Then, tilt it to the side and rotate it to free it up to remove it. Finally, we'll show you to remove the main control board. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. With access to the back of the refrigerator, the control board is located behind this panel. First, start by removing these four Phillips screws. With the screws removed, you can now pull off the cover. Before disconnecting any wires, make sure to take a photo so you can reference it later when you're reconnecting the wires. Next, remove the electrical connectors by depressing the locking tab and pulling on each one to remove it. If the electrical connector does not remove easily, you may need to wiggle the connector back and forth while supporting the control board with your other hand. Now work your way around until all the electrical connectors are removed. Then move the wires out of the way. Now depress the retaining tab and pull out on the control board to remove it. It's a good idea to handle the control board by its edges so you do not damage it. So that's it for this video. If you have any tips or tricks of your own, let us know in the comments below. And if you like fixing things, please consider subscribing.